Hello ladies and gentlemen, MarauderX here back with more Let's Play Smurpig. So, this first half of the video is just going to be me doing post-commentary over uh, going back and redoing stuff, all the stuff that we said we were going to do. So, we've got the Midas River, which is the secondary path. I went and got all of the frog coins off screen just to make sure I could do this path while showing you what you got and not worrying about missing it and having to do it again, because the frog coins, frog coins are frog coins. But the secondary important thing is there are flowers if you go through certain tunnels. So as you see here, there's a flower there being fought over by several monsters. Will we get it in the end after a long and entertaining sequence of events, watching them pass along from monster to monster? It's cute. It's adorable. Watching a new enemy with a fork stab a fish, and a Koopa Troopa, and a thief fighting over it and where it pops us out. I didn't realize how bad the audio was for this. It's something to do with the emulation and the the foreground uh, effect of the mist kinda messes everything up. I was having a very similar problem with an, uh, another emulator. Uh, I've got two SNES emulators on the, the Xbox that uh, have completely different effects. Uh, one of them, the uh, the scrolling effect in the background at the very beginning of the game, has that exact same problem. And so we didn't use that one because like we figured there's going to be more of that scrolling effect in like you know level up screens and things like that. So this uh, only happens you know half a dozen times I think. So. I leave the barrel jumping event in as well, because I was hoping that I did better. Spoiler alert, I don't. I don't do better at all. I just... I have no rhythm. I have no rhythm. The Beastie Boys would be very disappointed in my skills. <laughs> so, and like, I run into fish. That's what I do. But yeah, so this is basically all of the secondary stuff. We have the Midas River, we've got the, the barrel jumping here. Uh, we're, I'm going to transition here in a minute to uh, some of the newer stuff. This is probably the oldest backtracking that I've, I've got on video. Everything else will be slightly more recent, but I want to keep as much inf info in the game uh, as concise as possible, so to see what it is we are doing. I kind of wish I'd actually gone and kept tabs of what our flower points were at the end of each episode. That way you could see when I go back and redo this sort of thing, uh, how much we've actually gained by revisiting and getting some of these. But since I don't use the flower tabs and the flower boxes and flower jars and whatnot, uh, it's actually very hard to keep tabs on the flower tabs, because keeping score on RFP is a little difficult. Also, uh, if you want to restart the Midas River course by jumping on a little spring, it does cost money to redo, so keep that in mind. Uh, we have here the, the Yoshi's Isle race. This is actually being done by Culix, because I got so fed up with it that like, I, I had to walk away. He goes, let me see, and it was like, it was amazing because in, at the end of the last episode, Culix was saying that I was watching you do this, I don't see what you were doing wrong. And Culix tries, like, I don't see what I'm doing wrong. And Culix is actually really good at rhythm-based games. He is fantastic at rock band and things as such. And he manages to pull it out simply by the skin of his teeth. Uh... In all essence, probably something you shouldn't have won, because the hardest thing that he was having to deal with was the fact that if Boshi got too far off screen, it was basically just an instant win for him. If he, he gets too far ahead, there is really no way that we were able to catch up. And this, we leave this, uh, we left this little scene up for a while because I was actually not in the same room, because again, I had to go, I had to walk away, I had to get away from this. And so he came to get me to be like, hey, so yeah, I beat it. By the skin of my teeth, I beat it. And we're never doing this again. So as a result, um, you get some uh, 
Yoshi cookies, which I think allow you to summon Yoshi in battle for an attack. It's kind of like a bomb-type weapon. I think, I don't know, it's been forever since I've used it, but because we have so much in our inventory, we only actually get one of them. Uh, Yoshi uh, will hold on to the other two, and he promises that he won't eat them. Uh, you can get more by doing more Yoshi races, but uh, there's a whole lot of hell to the know that's going to happen with that. So, so yeah. Felix very excited that he was able to, to beat that. I was very excited because I really didn't want to have to ignore doing that because of some sort of technical limitation on either the, the TV or the system itself. And the last thing that I do is I come back to do the Whack-A-Mole game, which, uh, really not difficult. The hardest thing I have to deal with is the fact that I have no depth perception, and so I have the damnedest time dealing with the, uh, the pipes in the background or foreground. So, I typically stick to the left or right, because those I can just... As you can see, I'm just bouncing off those left and right. <laughs> so, but when I, the second I go for the uh, background or foreground, I, I lose focus. And I also just stop once I hit the required point. So the first one is 20, and in order to... Uh, once you get that, you get a flower tab. Next will be 20... Two, I think? Yeah, you just have to beat it by two. So it'd be 20, 22, 24, and then it's 26. Uh, but the first two prizes are going to be flower related. We saw that we got a flower tab. I think we get a flower jar for the next one. And you can see I'm trying to go for the, the golden Goombas in the, the foreground and uh, background and I just fail miserably at it. So I stick to my regular plan of the left and right pipes. And hoping that I can get, you know, the required number of points in the remaining seconds, and it's, it's, it's doable. And just stop. So 22 points gets us a flower jar, and then 24 points. Actually, after 24 points, it's... the the prizes are the same. Um, so it'll tell you when you beat this one to, to beat it by 26. So, for a while, it's a fairly good way to get some frog coins, if you can just increase your score by two each time. But, the fact that the, the patterns are exceptionally random as to what goes where, uh, it... You, it can be a gamble for the, the higher points. But if you are in need of frog coins, it's, this is a fairly good way to do it. So, at least early on. Because that's your rank 3 prize for everything, and then after that, just however many you get, as long as you beat your score. And I think after this, you just have to beat your score by 2 each time. After the once it hits the frog coins, it may be 26, and it just be once that's it. So okay, so after a ridiculous amount of dickery, we're back. Uh, just just a bit. Uh, one I... thing we missed this, but uh, yeah, frog coin. I swear, I do not remember that Yoshi mini game being so hard. Think thinking about it, I'm wondering if it's how we're playing it. Because we, we're not playing it on a, an original SNES. We're also yeah. not playing it on a CRT TV. Could be. Like, uh, we're playing it on a newer flat screen progressive scan. Could... Could that be a, a part of it? Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Nobody knows. <laughs> Alright, so there is one thing that uh, we were totally missed as well. And, uh, Helix is going to point that out to me, because he knows where it is. Go straight up, t like, towards the castle, but not quite all the way to the castle. That has house on the left? Uh, like, yeah, there you go. Aha, uh -huh, there's a person hidden here. Trample the monster, smash them all, it'll do you good. Trust me, on this one. Not creepy at all, is it? I won't... I won't trust any other thing you say but this. But the really funny thing with that guy is, if you... 
you know, mess around with em emulator settings and disable the layers of the houses, there, there isn't actually anyone there. <laughs> there's, there's no one. <laughs> there's a disembodied voice talking to us. Yeah. It does make sense, though. Like, why draw someone yeah, that's, that's never going not, to be seen? Yeah, you can't see them, so. Alright, so. Uh, our next stop is Moleville, which we're going to spend just a little bit of time in here. There's no hidden items here in the town that we need to be made aware of. There's a little bit of story, uh, and then there's some shopping. So let's get the story out of the way first. Yeah. Most of the stuff here happens after you're done with all the events in Moleville. Moleville. Alright, so we got Bowser, and what looks like the remnants of his army. Looks like he's missing all of his undead troops, so I guess, uh, they're all dead. Again. Allies have run off. We only had experience mi fighting Mario. Oh, you don't know how to fight a new bad guy. To be fair, they didn't do too well against Mario either. Yeah, so... If Mario hears that I've been kicked out of my own castle, my reputation will be ruined. I've got an image, uh... All Bowser cares about is his image. Alright, what's really funny is, they go down that set of stairs there. You can actually, I didn't do it here, but you can actually trigger this cutscene by walking over here. And he walks out the same place, so Bowser literally walks right in front of Mario. How does he not see Mario here? How? Alright, so Bowser screwed up, he didn't win. We've got the inn here that we can stay at. There's not really anything to, to do with the inn, other than, you know, sleep. Uh, item shop. So, we get some new items here. We have the punch glove for Mario. So, uh, with knockout power, buy one of those. We already have a finger shot, that's what Gino currently has. Yep. Symbols for uh, Malo. And mega stuff, and finally, some pants that Mario can wear. <laughs> Mario can wear pants. We also have new healing items, Mid Mushroom that heals a little bit more HP, and Maple Syrup which recovers a little bit more FP. So the second tier of those. Yeah. Mega Shirt, Mega Cape, Mega Pants, but the work pants can be worn by all three of them, mm -hmm. and it increases their attack, right. but lowers their magic defense? It lowers one of the three stats, but it raises typically two of the others. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, it lowers the stat so much as it doesn't raise it as much as... What we currently have, yeah. equipped armor-wise. So, um, should I go for the extra attack and just buy three sets of work pants? I would at least go for the attack on Mario. Gino and Mello, they can take or leave it. I mean, it's all the same price, so... Yeah. Um, uh, well, I bought one. Let's... Um, uh, let's see how much it would, uh, change everything. We'll, uh, switch those out. So Mario with the work pants, it would lower his magic defense, but raises his magic attack, defense, and attack. So, if we're worried about, uh, magic yeah. attacks on Mario... Same deal on Malo, but Malo already has 30, so that's... Yeah, like, it does give some magic defense, just not as much as the Thick. Yeah, not as much as... And then uh, much less than the Mega. Yeah. So... We want that on Mario, because, I mean, that gives him... Yeah. Brings his attack up to 81, it's still not quite as much as, uh... Geno, so I think I'll just do uh, Mega for... Yeah, it does raise magic attack, too, that I forgot about. Yeah. So. Maybe Gino. It's Actually, I'll, I'll just go ahead and get three. Because, yeah. I mean, it's... It's good for everyone. Yeah. There we go. And... Everyone's got work pants. And we can sell... I'll go ahead and sell the... The thick pants and the thick shirt. Make up a little bit of money. And I keep the items. Uh, I do need to sell some, I, or I need to use some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, look, because we, we really should just like not even hold back at all in the next 
Ne yeah. Next few dungeons just jump and Geno beam everything. Everything's getting a laser to the face. You you thought you were having fun with Meteor and Chrono Cross? I'm gonna laser everything in the face. Alright, so uh, yeah, I think that's where we'll end it here, because next we get to go into the next dungeon, which is uh, the Mulville Mines. Which we can go up here and talk to people about real quick. Yeah. A star dropped into the mountain and trapped some kids inside. One of the menfolk. One of the menfolk! Alright, so we get to go inside now. As everyone's trying to get into the mine. And there's people up top digging from up here as well. They, this this person ramming into the rock over and over. I'm digging from the outside. We gotta help them folks out. So, there's trouble in Moleville. We'll help the nice mole people. Yeah. So, uh, but we'll see you guys in the next installment. Uh, so, till then, later, everyone. <laughs>